Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this inspiring TED Talks HCI podcast episode, I explore Mark Mueller Eberstein's 2012 TEDx talk, Lead and Be the Change. Welcome back to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. It's great to be with you again today for this inspiring TED Talks HCI podcast episode, where I'll be exploring Mark Mueller Eberstein's 2012 TEDx talk, Lead and Be the Change. Professor Mark Mueller Eberstein is an internationally acclaimed business leader, entrepreneur, consultant, researcher, best-selling author, and teaches at Rutgers University Center for Management Development. Mark explores the dynamic between the human and technical factors that positively impact business operations and how businesses can leverage key technology trends. In this episode, he'll be talking more specifically about change, why we resist change, and how we can get past that to lead change around us. Thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you on the flip side of this first clip. So we're talking about transformation and change, right? And there's a lot of change around us. Technology is changing, societies are changing, our personal lives are changing, but the only constant in life is really change. But why is change often so scary? Why do we not see the opportunities but only the risks? Why is it so hard to get out of the comfortable status quo we are in right now to move forward? Well, of course, we need some energy, right? If you're comfortable in one place, you need some energy, you need to move forward, you need to find the energy somewhere within or around you. And then, of course, we're human. We have emotions. And very often, our emotions get the better of us when confronted with dramatic transformational change around us. Professor Schlossberg has a great theory and a great model of transition that really explains the emotional roller coaster we are going through when confronted with radical transformation. Something big happens to us or around us or with us, the first thing is denial. This is not happening. It's not happening to us, it's not happening now. Eventually, though, reality sinks in, a lot of fear, anxiety take over. And what do we do? What does it mean for us? Will we have enough to eat? Will we have a roof over our head? What gaps will we be left? Who knows? We're stressed. We try not to deal with it. But eventually, we'll try to find out how to practice some things, try to say, oh, this works, this might not work, we're learning things. And then we start to discover the opportunities in the transformation. We're getting excited. We want to change the world and want to change everybody around us and with us and realize everybody else might be, while we are super enthusiastic, might be still on the other side and be stuck in fear and anger and depression. So this is how it works. Sometimes it goes in seconds, sometimes it takes years, and unfortunately, sometimes people and complete organizations get stuck somewhere in the middle of deep depression, unproductivity, and fear. So our goal, we have reached the excitement about the transformation we want to drive is to take the other people with us and help them through this emotional roller coaster. How do we do this? He's absolutely right. We don't like change. As human beings, we resist change. That's inevitable. That's really the only constant that we know in life is that things will continue to change and we will continue to resist change. When we're in the status quo, going to our normal business, our daily lives, uh, it it takes some sort of uh, 
push to get us out of that inertia, to, to get us to move in a different direction. And couple that need for some sort, form of energy to push us in a new direction with the natural emotional resistance that we have to change. And it's no wonder that so often change initiatives fail in large part due to a lack of buy-in from across the organization, from across members of the team, uh, and because people just have too much emotional resistance to change. And a lot of that is built upon fear and anxiety and stress related to the change. What does this change mean, mean for me in my life, for my work, for my family? Will we be able to uh, be successful in this new environment? These are all the types of typical questions that come up almost every single time that a major change happens, whether it's in your personal life, in your work life, or whatever the case may be. So again, we, we know that change is hard. We know that resistance is inevitable. The question is, how do we start to break down that resistance? And first, how do we break it down within ourselves? How do we make sure that we are open to change, that we're open to pivoting when necessary and making adjustments to our own approach so we can continually learn and grow and develop into the person that we're meant to become, that we can uh, fulfill our full potential. How do we do that? And we can't do that unless we're open to change. How do we break down that resistance for ourselves? That's really what uh, he's exploring in the first uh, half of his TED Talk here in this first clip. And as we move into the second half, the second clip, he's going to be then talking about once we are able to drive change and open ourselves up to change uh, internally, then how do we leverage that to push towards leading others around us to change? Because I might be able to get on board with some sort of a shift, some sort of a change, a strategic direction, a pivot, whatever, but if I can't get my people on my team to buy in and, and commit to the change and break down the resistance that they have or within my organization or in my community or in my family or whatever, if I can't do that, then most change still can't occur, even though your intentions are good and you're putting forth your own personal effort. So how can we lead change effectively? That's what he'll explore in the next part of this talk. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. First, you want to have a super clear vision of what this transformation actually looked like. It has to be clear, it has to be short, it has to be crisp. And by the way, 80% of all change management projects fail because they don't have a good vision. So if you get one thing right, this has a huge opportunity. Second, be clear on the impact. Of course, the negative impact if you don't move, or the people around you don't move, the organizations don't move. But also the positive impact that addresses the fears, the concerns, and the look, the search for opportunities that is out there and with, it, with all of us that gives them something to hold on, to get the energy, to get through this curve and get out and be enthusiastic and motivated and drive things forward. Communicate. 
If you're dealing with somebody who's in denial or a deep fear, they are not reading a five-page document. So you have to be very clear and crisp what's in it for them, why they don't have to be afraid, and how they can help to move things forward and make it better. Over-communicate again and again and again according to where somebody is on the emotional curve. Doesn't matter if you're enthusiastic, if they're afraid, you need to be addressing them where they are and to deal with their fears. Fourth, don't do it alone. Build a team that helps you to understand the big picture. A, device, a diverse team with diverse viewpoints sharpens your vision, gets a better strategy, get a better plan, and you have a lot of allies that can help people and organizations through every stage of the emotional curve. And last but not least, you own the change. You are the leader of the change you want to see and you want to drive. Celebrate the victories step by step while you are going through this transformation. So people stay engaged, they see the progress, and you start a movement and more and more people will join and support you in that journey. And at the end, don't forget to celebrate the victory. Celebrate, harness the energy, because one thing is sure, change is happening again. But if you have successfully managed a radical transformation once, the second time, it's not easy, but it's going to be easier. So in the second half of his TED Talk, he then explores several very specific tips and tactics that need to be taken as you're trying to move beyond personal change and move into leading change with those around you. Now, again, the reality is that in many aspects of our lives, we can be as committed as we want to the change, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything for how it's going to shift our family life, our community life, our work life, whatever. Um, and most changes require more of a, a commitment from a broader range of people. So how do we develop that commitment? And he lays out several important steps. And of course, it always starts with creating a clear message around the change, a clear vision for what this change will mean. What is the impact of this change? How is this going to improve the lives of those around you? Because it's going to take effort, it's going to take work, and it's going to take sustained effort over time. And unless you see some sort of a benefit or value to it, uh, most people, even if, if they're on board initially, their, their attention span will will wane, their, their effort will, will uh, fall off over time. So create that clear message, communicate that clear message, and develop a, a small group, a, a small team of people that can support you in the effort to lead the change. Because you will burn out, you won't be able to do it all yourself, and eventually your energy will be expended. So get some champions that can also support you and can be champions for the change in their particular sphere of influence. Uh, at the beginning, that's going to start small. You might just have one or two people that you can really trust and believe in, who believe in you and you believe in them, and together you can start to build some momentum. Over time, that, that team to drive change can grow and become more diverse, and you can get more diverse perspectives uh, around the table uh, to also to not only direct the change itself and, and, and move you in the right direction, but to to leverage the different perspectives uh, and backgrounds of the individuals on this team to create more buy-in and better communicate in a way that's uh, that's meaningful uh, to people around the organization. Now, again, at the end of the day, no nobody is foolish enough to think that this is going to be easy. The reality is that most change initiatives, particularly the, the most complex and widespread change initiatives, fail. And it's not just a matter of them not quite accomplishing what the organization set out to do. These are often very epic failures that can often cause more problems uh, and create new problems than even existed before. Uh, and when that occurs, then it just reinforces this mindset among the people in your organization that what is the point? Why even try um, in these change initiatives? Because they're going to fail and it just builds up resistance for the next time. But when you start, when you do it right, when you create a clear message and you create a, a coalition and you communicate 
effectively across the organization and you put sustained effort behind it, when you do it right, it can really uh, break down the resistance, not only this time, but in future instances, because people will see that you've done it successfully. Again, it's not going to make it easier the next time necessarily, but it will uh, perhaps get you on the right track and allow you uh, to move forward in a positive direction. With that, I would invite you. We're in a world full of opportunities. Some of them look scary, but they are definitely out there to make our world a better place. And I would like you to become the change you want to see in the world. Thank you very much. I really appreciate any time I come across a good discussion on on change uh, and and managing and, and leading change, because I think this, as he says at the very beginning of his talk, it's inevitable. Like we we have change in our lives each and every day, um, and the only people who don't change are those who become complacent and stagnant and and stop growing and learning, and that's not what successful organizations look like. And in my mind, that's not what a life well lived looks like. So I think we all need to be striving for growth and growth means change. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. As always, I hope you stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.